In today's episode of the MSA Rental Market Update, we are looking at the San Jose rental market for multifamily properties, more specifically, conventional apartments. Now, as you can see, the San Jose metro statistical area is actually pretty long. Uh, you can kind of see where it is, and I'll scroll in a little bit because some of these may not make sense to you. Here's San Francisco, Sacramento. We got Las Vegas out here, LA down here. And then, of course, we've got the Central Valley, the San Joaquin Valley right here, which is the largest valley in the country. There is a small mountain range in between I-5 and the San Jose Metro Statistical Area. And then, of course, we have the Sierra. Uh, the Sierras are right here. So let me scroll in a little bit so you can kind of see that this market is really a long market. Um, for no other reason than I don't have an answer for it. And I grew up here. So, um, this area in the top, the Northern section really is what they consider Silicon Valley. And then you start to come down into the central area, getting down by Gilroy, Watsonville, uh, and on down 25, you can actually take 101 down to Los Angeles. And then of course the coastal route or PCH, which is Highway 1, okay? So this kind of gives you an idea. I wish we could just break it off right about here and just look at what's in Silicon Valley, but we're doing the whole metro statistical area. So it is covering this area that is extending from uh, Gilroy all the way down to, uh, well, hell, I don't even know what to uh, how to pronounce that, and I grew up in this area. So it is what it is. All right. Now you've got an idea where it is. Let's take a look at our filters. So as usual, we are excluding all corporate, all military, all senior, and all vacation. We are only including market and market affordable. If we go to location, you can see that we have market metro statistical area and the San Jose metro statistical area. So let's go see what the analytics tell us in one of the most expensive markets in the country. Uh, we'll look at all asset classes first, and then we'll break out each individual asset class, A's, B's, and C's for conventional apartments on their own. So let's go look at the analytics. So here's our supply side snapshot for the San Jose metro statistical area you'll see that there are 8,177 properties in this market, totaling 176,745 units. There are currently 8,230 units under construction. And in the last 12 months, 2,118 more units were rented than went vacant. And the previous 12 months, 8,879 more units were rented than went vacant. So definitely a slowing in absorption. And our vacancy has gone from 5% to 5.3%, so a small tick up. We do see a year over year rent increase from uh, a year ago of 3.6%. We'll see what it is quarter over quarter. Of course, we are not looking at the crazy capital market of the San Jose, California metro statistical area. We are only looking at the space market, which if you look at these rents is crazy all in itself. If we come down to the long-term occupancy average, you could see over the last 22 years, this market likes to be at 95% and it is sitting about 95 and a half, 94 and a half. So right on slightly below that long-term occupancy average. And as with the other videos lately, we will plot this on the market cycle chart when we get to the end of this video. So let's go take a look at the data and see what the data tells us about all three asset classes combined. So here is our rent analytic data. We do not look at asking rent. We don't care what the owners are asking. We only care what they are collecting. So you can see that in the first quarter of 22, it was $2,810 a month went up to 2967 and then started a downtrend. So for some of you that weren't expecting to see this, like everywhere else in the country between the second and third quarter, which is about where interest rates starting affected th started to affect things, the uh, rental market started to decline. Went down to 2853 and then interestingly enough up to 2878 in the month of January. 
CoStar has told us that these numbers are good for January now, so we're starting to look at them. There's aren't, it's not a full quarter, it's just the month of January, okay? We got to get to about the middle of March before we start considering this January and February, and unfortunately, there's no way for me to break them out individually. All right, so let's see what the deliveries, construction, and absorption tell us. So we can see that there were no deliveries in this marketplace, and there are quite a few properties that are under construction. So even though there were no deliveries, 117 absorbed in the first quarter of 2022, and then another 98 absorbed, and then we started seeing negative absorption. So when we look at this, we see we had uh, 68 units go vacant in the third quarter, 255 more units went vacant in the fourth quarter, and then another 100 units went vacant uh, in the first month of January. So it's interesting that we saw that tick up in rent from fourth quarter to first quarter, considering we had negative absorption during uh, that month. So pretty interesting tale there. Does not follow demand supply principles, but uh, the third and fourth quarter did follow those demand supply principles. So that tells me that that uh, rent for the first month of January um, may be misreported. We'll see when we get to the full quarter what that's going to look like. But right now, um, it's definitely a sign that um, we are seeing negative absorption in the San Jose metro statistical area. So let's go see if the other asset classes, A, B, and C individually are dragging this down or if they're all sharing the load. So let's go take a look at class A first. So here's our class A rent analytic data. There are 113 properties in the market, totaling 35,210 units. Looking at effective rent, it was at 3371 in the first quarter of 22, went up to 3591, went down to 3537 and then down to 3419 and very 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 slight tick up to very 3432 in the first month of 2023 or in January. So if we look at uh deliveries and absorption, we can see that we had 1125 deliver uh and 1288 absorb in the second quarter none delivered in the first 777 absorbed we had 149 deliver uh in the third quarter negative six so that means six more units went vacant so we had uh almost 2,000 units a little over 2,000 units in the first two quarters with only 1125 delivering and then uh, another 149 and negative six, then another 471 and negative 72. So that explains our downtrend in the third and fourth quarter. Um, does not explain the uptrend because we had 226 more deliver and an only 199 of the 226. Now that is greater than 80%, so we like that. Um, but as you can see, the occupancy did not increase. It didn't decrease, but it also did not increase. It stabilized at that 91.4%, yet we still saw that slight increase in the Class A rent. So somewhat reacting appropriately to demand supply principles. Uh, wouldn't call the Class A's dragging the market down, but let's go see what the Class B story is telling us. Here is our Class B rent analytic data. We have 992 properties totaling 52,937 units. Looking at our effective rent, we had 2,928 in the first quarter, up to 3,106 in the second, down to 3,033 in the third, and down to 2,959 in the fourth. So, as we've seen with all the rest of the markets, again, that break point between second and third quarter. And then a, an uptick in the month of January. Let's see if absorption tells us a different story this time. So let's look at our deliveries and absorption. We had minimal deliveries, 41 uh, deliveries in the first quarter, 381 absorbed, 75 delivered, 241 absorbed. So more absorption than delivered in the first two quarters, but then things went backwards. So 821 delivered, only 21 absorbed, then another five delivered and 114 absorbed. So uh, pretty close. Let's see, we've got uh, 900 and about 40 units here. We got, let's see, 627. So 
We actually were about negative absorption of 100 uh, plus units, not too terribly bad, but still not keeping up with the deliveries and, and not negative absorption. We absorbed within 100 something units of the delivery, so not too terribly bad, even though we saw that break. But you can see that we had the uptick in occupancy from first and second quarter, then down, then slightly up and then slightly up again. So little different of a trend here in the occupancy where um, we've got a little bit of a roller coaster effect happening. So that does explain that little uptick we had in January. So class B's are uh, reacting appropriately to the demand supply principle. So let's go see what the class C market is telling us. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that it's going to be different than what we've seen in the Sun Belt. I'm gonna say it's reacting appropriately to its demand supply principle fundamentals, but we'll find out here in just a second. So here is our class C rent analytic data. There are 6,884 properties, totaling 88,201 units. Looking at effective rent, the first quarter of 2022, it was at 2377, went up to 2433, and then down to 2414, down to 2386, and then up a little bit in the month of January. So like the other asset classes, uh, Class C followed the same trend with that break point between the second and third quarter. Let's see what the uh, absorption tells us. And... Uh, once again, we see that downtrend. Now we got that little uptick, even though we have 202 units go negative. So that is fairly interesting. And we've gone from 96% down to 95.7. So not a very large number down because we had um, some pretty good absorption in the first and second quarter. Took a little bit to catch up with the negative trend. So pretty much what moved in moved out. Uh, since that time frame. So uh, demand supply fundamental principles are acting appropriately except for the rents in that first month. But again, that could be erroneous um, information. As we sit at this moment, we'll have to see what it looks like when the quarter is over. So that said, I think this can confirm because we do have uh, units under construction. Absorption is definitely slowing to going negative. We are sitting right on that long-term occupancy line. So I'd plot San Jose right here, slap dab on the long-term occupancy average. Rents are still, even though they're slightly declining, there is still some growth in those rents year over year, but we are seeing some quarterly declines with that slight uptick in January. So uh, the San Jose Metro statistical area is sitting right on the long-term occupancy average in between oversupply and recession. So that does it for San Jose. Stay tuned tomorrow for Richmond, Virginia. I will see you guys tomorrow.